Pete Calandra here. On this week's episode of Ambient Tuesdays, I'll be doing something a little bit different. Instead of improvising a piano piece, or an ambient synth jam, or even scoring a photo essay, I'll be composing a piece using only sounds found in the newly released Hauschka Library from Spitfire Audio. It's best to listen to this piece with earbuds. I'll be back after it's played to break it down and go through the track and show you what the individual components sound like. So let's get started. This was an interesting library in that all of the sound sources are created only using an acoustic piano and either electronic treatment of that sound or a physical treatment of the sound by holding down the strings to mute the sound, putting ping pong balls on the strings, throwing things on the strings as the notes are being played, putting a tambourine on the strings, whatever experiments that uh, the guy Volker Bertelman uh, came up with was what they used. I'm going to go through these sounds, but I've also treated a lot of them myself additionally, so I'm going to have to mute as we go along. So I've got 21 instances of contact open here, and this first one here is uh, just the acoustic piano itself. Right. So it's very bright, and um, I'm not sure that they actually did multi-sampling of this, because when I open it up, I can't really see, and I had to do some work with the um, I had to do some work with the velocity curve in order to get uh, nice dynamics with my touch. But that's the sound of the piano. 
And what I've done is I've added a, something called a gatekeeper, which is a rhythmic gate to that. It's really nice. And I've sent it through the Fab Filter Reverb. And then the next thing I did was I sent it through this delay chain that I made. And let's take a quick look at that because I've got a lot of stuff going through there. So I have um, here H delay set to eighth notes with a nice ping pong. And then on top of that, I added a filter freak from Sound Toys. Right, which does a nice additional pulse. And then I added another echo after that. Dotted eighth note rhythm. So it gives you a nice uh, rhythmic ambience. And let's see how I use that. I only use that uh, sound on this melody spot in the bridge here. So what's cool about that is that the piano sound comes through as normal, and then you hear all the effects as the piano after the piano sound. It gives it a nice rhythmic texture. And then the next uh, bit here, Plug hits, I did a random grid until I came up with something I liked. And I only use that also to double that melody in the same spot. I think that sounds like ping pong balls on the strings. Now the next uh, sound, which is really cool, and let me mute these, is a stopped piano. Uh, it'd be good if I hit that record. That almost sounds like plucked strings, right? And what I did to that was I added some Fab Filter Reverb. And I sent that through the delay chain as well. So let's listen to that. All right, if I mute these two things, it's very boring. That adds some nice depth. And that adds some rhythmic interest. Okay, so the next thing that uh, they give you are rhythms. some really interesting uh, rhythmic textures that you can very easily put together. And I've got that here. And the only thing I do with that at the end is um, I do a filter sweep here. As the sound is dying, as the track is dying down. Okay, um, next I've got these pad hits, and I also believe this is a. All right, this is not a grid. Right, so that sounds like tambourine hits, right? So there's probably a tambourine on the piano that's vibrating. I'm not quite sure how we did that, but I use that right here. Right, and you can hear that I've panned that from left to right, and I've also faded that in using probably the expression 
parameter. Next, we've got this pad grid. So notice this is another grid, an Evo grid. It's really nice. And the only thing I have with that is it's going through the fab filter. And I have that set on a hall. So let's take a listen to that in isolation. And you can see that I've probably done some controller work there. Mod wheel and expression. Yep. All right. Let me just, I'll leave this open for the time being. Next, we've got uh, the drums. And it's interesting that... All these percussive sounds that they've got arranged chromatically going up this keyboard from C1. Oh, I didn't even notice that. They've got that uh, double two octaves higher so that you could... do two hand rhythms, although triggering the same sample so you do get a little bit of the machine gun effect but what I've done with the drums is I've broken them up into three tracks um, I've got the upper part of the drum here and then on the next track down I've added the kick drum right here And then on this track here, towards the end, the snare drum comes in. Let's look at some of the treatments. For the upper part of the drums, I did nothing. For the, for the uh, kick drum, I've added some Renaissance bass. to beef it up a little bit and then I put a C4 just to make sure that the sound wasn't jumping out just to tame some of the dynamics now on the snare drum I rolled off some of the low end and the snare drums over here that's great but it didn't it sort of got in the way in the track um, and then I put it through the Sound Toys Radiator, make sure it's clean and not noisy because I can't stand the noise. And I'm really driving it, right? Just really driving it. So it's not only louder, but it's also beefier. And I put it through the little plate. I don't typically use uh, reverbs directly in the insert it into the track. I usually use it as a send effect, but here I'm using it to just on this one track, so I didn't bother with making an AUGS track for it. Okay, so this next track is, I believe, one of the artist's presets. Yes, so this is Ethereal Shimmer. <laughs> it's a nice track, and I've got that right here, just playing a little pulse. Next up, Glacial Shifts Grid. Let's... Uh... Right, another rhythmic track. So that's over here in this section of the song, right before the, uh, right in the bridge. It's the low pulse. And then here, got some higher shimmery stuff. And then to the next track we have, In the Light Grid. And that I have going through the Eventide Black Hole Reverb. So let me mute that for a sec.
It's really that's a beautiful sound. Um, it almost doesn't need the black hole, but it's there anyway. On the next track, we have I think these are the artist presets. Uh, let me close this. Yeah. So this is called Morning Stream at 120 beats per minute. Right, another pulsing. And I think I just added a trim to this because it was very soft, so I brought the volume up there. And I used this in the beginning. Right, just to give a little pulse to the opening. And I'll go through the sections uh, in a minute. Just let me just get through all these tracks. Earth Rumbles. This, I believe, is also a... No, this is an Evo Grid. Interesting. Let me... Uh... Now, I've got this going through the Brower motion just to give it a little circular panning. With the earbuds on, you can hear it. Right center, going to the left. Right, it feels like it's getting a little closer and then a little further away. Uh, it's just it's subtle. And this is also in the beginning of the piece, right here. Yeah, this is in tempo, in sync. Oh wait, that's the wrong track. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right, next we have Solar Winds, which is a similar track to the last one in that it's an ethereal pad. And what I've done to this is I've taken a lot of the information out of the center because I wanted to spread out the stereo field a little. And I've also um, added the Brower motion to this. I find sometimes with all these very dense tracks that they can get a lot of mid-range buildup in the center of your mix. And so I like to spread things out a little bit and leave the center of the mix for the kick drum in this particular piece. Uh, yeah, and the, some of the lower piano notes. And then we've got Swell. <laughs> It's only in a couple of areas over here. So let's listen to that, how I use that. And then finally, at the very end, a reverse piano sound. got that going through the black hole. So I start off with these earth rumbles. And they fade in. Louder the second time through. And add this morning stream. Now, I'm not particularly careful when I do this about things being quite on the grid. You can see that I'm not really on the grid. It's a little loosely played in. I want it to have that kind of a feel. I don't want it to be so precise. So here we have the solar winds added to that. That's this track here. And then the sunrise over Ararat. Right, this very low rumble. And then these ethereal shimmers up on top here. In the light.
it's nice. I love how it's, uh, you know, you, uh, there's not a lot of information being played here, but because the sounds are constantly evolving, you get a lot of information coming at you with very little actual notes. Um, it's really be a time saver for scoring things. Now, I've got this, uh, that leads into this piano bit, stopped piano. And then these pad hits come in after that. And I fade this in. And then the drums come in with just the upper drums. comes in and then pulse so in this section here piano uh, gets thicker. I drop down my left hand an octave and then I change from just two note textures to three note textures in the right hand. And that gets doubled with, or this gets added to it, which is kind of cool, the ethereal Shimmer. And then the kick drum enters at that point. So let's listen to that next section. All right, I've got these earth rumbles as a little transition. You can really hear them going from left to right. Now, this middle section here, I've got these two tracks which are playing the same thing, um, and one is an octave higher than the other. And they're basically just triads. So if I make this into, oh, look at this. Let me fix this. This is not good. Okay, if I make this into notation, you can just see that, right? It's a C2 or a G suspended chord, C minor, F minor, F suspended, G, C minor, A flat, B flat, F suspended, C minor, A flat, major, B flat, and then back to the original C2 or G suspended chord. So just a series of rising triads. We got bass right here. It's like eerie, ethereal, orchestral, otherworldly. It's very it's really amazing that they were able to take piano as the main sound source and create all these really unusual textures. Once we get to this point after this middle section, it's just a larger version of this section and this section, and then with an ending. So at this point, I think I'm going to play the track out from the beginning, now that you've heard how everything sounds. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you like this content, please subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified, please ring that bell. Also, please leave any questions in the comment section below. If you've got any idea for any other kind of content you'd like to see me put up here, also make some suggestions. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.